Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. We've got a stunning day today. We, this time of year, we generally we get a little bit of sea threat. I don't know if you can see it in the waist there. Yeah, we get a little bit of fog in the morning that usually burns off after an hour or two of sunlight. We have got the sun just poking through over there. Hopefully, we get to see him too today. Hi, right, um, my freezer's getting a little bit low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a run off and I'm try some wrecks today. We'll, uh, <laughs> depending on what the conditions are like when we get there, or if we find any wrecks that haven't got fishing gear on, we'll maybe fish with some lows. And then when the tide's right, we might try and put the anchor down. That is the plan today. Best time of day to be out in it. Let's go and see if we can't find some bait. Well, it's a start. Get a good half a dozen of them, we're doing fine. Well, I tell you what, they're a decent size though. What a lovely day. All I'm doing is these, these mackerel are swimming around all the way through the water column. All the way from the surface to the seabed. Drop down to the bottom, a couple of bounces if you haven't had anything. A couple of wines, a couple of bounces. That way you work your way all the way through the water column. There we are. Right, I've got myself half a dozen good mackerel baits. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head up to one of the wrecks. I'm gonna go via a reef. If it looks all right when I get there, I might drop a low down on it. We'll just see what it's like. Let's go. Go on then, I'll have one drift. Oh, that's a fish. Feels like a rat. <laughs> Not the intended target, but a stunning fish to see, nonetheless. Look at the colours on that guy. What an absolutely beautiful fish. Male cuckoo ras. I don't think you'll find a better looking fish in the British Isles. Absolutely stunning, aren't they? Just the vibrancy of that blue. Right, there doesn't seem to be very much around here. Let's get moving. <laughs> doesn't get much better than this, does it? Wow. Right, I've just arrived at, uh, well, this is the second wreck that I've had to try because the first one, it had fishing gear alongside of it. When I say that, what I mean is someone, a commercial fisherman has put a net alongside the wreck, a net or a set of crab pots. And you can tell that usually because there will be crab pot boys or net boys up on the surface around where the wreck are. And also, if, you, if you're careful, you can look and you can see it on the sounder. But yeah, this is the second one I've got to. And look at the conditions. Just amazing. I'm going to run a drift over the top of the wreck really quickly just to see how fast we're moving and see if I can't pull a pollock out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and figure it out so I haven't got the sun behind me so that my ears are glowing. And <laughs> so that I can get the anchor down. Yep, that's the plan. Uh, I've just pulled out really quick, just pulled out a one hook wrecking rig out my bag. I've done a one hook wrecking rig just so it's quicker. And baited it with a fresh mackerel head. 
very very simple I'm just dropping blood all over the boat <laughs> of course I am and I'm just going to drop down to the wreck a couple of reasons why I've used a one hook wrecking rig to start with first because it came out of the bag first secondly because because there's less hooks, less muppets, less baits, I can get away with less weight because it gets down to the bottom quicker. And I just want to see what's going on. I'm going to be fishing right down in amongst the wreck, right down in amongst the rough stuff. So you need to be on top of it. It's uh, very reactive. The fish live right in amongst where it's roughest, where it's snaggiest. And as soon as they feel any resistance, they will pull back and they will try and get back in the wreck. So as soon as you get a bite, you need to be on it. There's some pouting down there. Feeling like little tiny bites. I'm feeling for the wreck as well. I'm lowering the lead down and banging off the wreck. Because the lead, when it hits sand, it's like a soft thud. And I know I'm off the wreck. The lead hitting on metal, hitting on a shipwreck, is a hard bang. So I know I'm, when it's banging hard, I know I'm where I need to be. Yeah, I'll run around and try. It's deceiving. We are drifting at just under a knot, 0.9 knots. I mean, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's absolute glass, doesn't it? It looks like we're not even moving at all. But we are. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get the anchor ready. I'll try and get the anchor down into it now. We might get an hour. We might get an hour before we have to re-anchor, if we're lucky. I have a, a five kilo plow anchor. Wait, it's a Bruce anchor, plow anchor. I have 25 feet of chain. And on my... Ugh, on my anchor rope, I have an Alderney ring and a boy. That's used for hauling the anchor. I'm not going to go into too much detail explaining how I do all this because I've got another video showing you how to anchor a wreck. I will tag that into the description of the video. But yeah, uh, I know which way I'm going to drift now. I'm going to throw. I know which way I'm going to drift now. I'm going to go and try and put the anchor down. Fingers crossed it works first time. If it doesn't, every day's a school day. <laughs> right. Get cracking. I have my anchor rope marked by depth. It's all the same colour, otherwise I would never know how much anchor rope I was putting out. There's another 50 feet. There's 200 feet. So on. Right. Now that I've let out what I think is enough rope, generally you're using two to three times the depth of water in rope. So I mean 80 odd meters, so I'm gonna be using 160 to 190 meters of rope. Once I've let out enough, this is, this is just the way I do it. Other people have got other methods. This is what I found easiest in this boat. Make it off to a cleat. Attach my button. This button is there so that the anchor boy doesn't slide all the way to the boat. And then pass the rope over the top and tie it around the cleat. It saves doing all of this through that front hatch. Now that the rope has been tied to the front of the boat, Let it go from the side and the boat will swing round. And fingers crossed that should have put us right on the corner of the wreck. Let's see, look, see how the boat swings round in the tide. Anchor drop number two. Yeah, we just got sat back on the wreck, lovely. And a gust of wind coming, you can see it's blowing a little bit. So swung us off the wreck. <laughs> Hopefully. This will do it now. 
Right, I'm finally happy with where we're sat on a wreck and we're fishing. There we are, sat nice on the wreck. There's the wreck there, tide's going that way. This is where I put my anchor down and it's laying me right up against the wreck. And there's my anchor boy. It's taken a while, it's taken a little bit of maneuverability just because the wind picks up and then it drops off and the wind picks up and then it drops off. There's a bite. Now ling bites, ling bites, they are shy. If you've got a ling bite, you know you've got it. Conga bites on the other hand, conga can be anything from like a little tiny mouthing bite to a proper rod wrenching bite. At the moment it's just pouty. But pouting and whiting aren't a bad thing. They'll chew up the baits and create a bigger scent trail. Yeah, usually, unless you manage to hit one on the head, you have to build up a bit of a scent trail before you get the fish properly on the feed. So I'm gonna rig up another rod, get another fresh bait down there and we'll see if we can't get some scent going. Scent brings the little fish, little fish bring the big fish. All the rigs that I'm using today, it's gonna to be wrecking rigs and conga rigs. I, uh, I've, in conjunction with Cox and Roll, I've been producing some fish locker wrecking rigs and fish locker conga rigs. I will tag a link to them in the description of the video if you're interested. Great for catching conga and links. That is a fish, but it's in the wreck. And it's let go. These fish live right in the roughest wreck, roughest wreckage down there. Just wonder what them seals are shouting about. So chances are, all that one did was it just poked its head out and got hold of the bait, and then backed into the hole. Yeah, when you get a bite, because you're right down in the rough stuff, you need to get on top of them, and get them out of there sharpish. There we go, there's another one. Full mackerel flapper on this one to try and get some extra scent down there. When the fish get on the feed, I'll put half a flapper down. Name of the game right now is getting the scent going. Yep, that's a fish. Come on out you come. Oh you swine. Oh. I'm expecting this is going to be a decent sized conga reel. I was busy sorting out that other rod. Saw the bike, turned around to get the camera on and it's had a chance to get in the wreck. Oh, no. You have got to be right on top of them today. Give him a little bit of slack and see what he's going to do. Big ones don't get that size by being stupid, do they? In this situation, there's only really one or two things you can do. And keep pulling and keep pulling and keep pulling and hope to pull the fish out. Usually that results in like breaking your line or something giving way. Or you can leave it like this, leave it with a bit of slack and see if it comes out of its hole. It might just go further in the wreck, but sometimes they do come out. I'll give it a couple of minutes and see what it wants to do. I gave that fish an extra few minutes and it just went deeper and deeper into the wreck. Unfortunately, that's all, it's all part of wreck fishing. It snapped me off and you can see me leaders all chaffed up and covered in bits of, little bits of rust. Yep, yeah, we're fishing down there in the rough stuff. Whenever you've had something like that, always check your leader. I'm gonna take off probably about that much. Of, see, look there. Take off about a foot and a half of me leader because it's all rubbed up. Tie up another rig and we'll get back down. Well, 
Or wherever it is, I've got hold of it. Just a greedy strap, conger eel. It plays right into what I was saying earlier. When I was saying that the bites that we were getting when they were dropping off was just smaller eels. Smaller eels ragging the bait. Come on. There go. That's the difficulty with the smaller eels like that. <laughs> they haven't got enough body weight. You use a T-bar and you use their own body weight to pop off the hook. When the only way, I mean that was about what, eight pound. When they're running light like that, you can't get them off the hook. When you're wrecking like this, tackle losses are inevitable. It's gonna happen, you're fishing into a wreck. There's all, top, all types of snags down there. There's ropes, there's all bits of net, there's the wreck itself. I've just lost a rig there into the wreck. Braid doesn't like wreckage. Braid doesn't like anything that, that'll cut it. Just snaps like cotton under tension which is why i use a mono rubbing leader now it's time consuming you lose your gear you have to tie a new leader on measure it out put some swivels on you're talking 15 minutes easy that's why i have pre-made wrecking leaders it's a rubbing leader with a swivel on one end a zip slider inside and a snap on the end and all i'll do here is i'll either tie my my mainline braid onto that swivel or tie a snap swivel onto there and connect it add a lead add a hook length and you're ready to fish so instead of it taking you maybe 15 20 minutes to get back down into the fish because if the fish are on the feed you need to capitalize on it just tie on a wrecking leader tie on a pre-trace you're down in two minutes it's all about working smarter not harder Like I said before, getting them up out of the wreck is absolutely crucial. Once you get them up away from the seabed, you can afford to take your time a little tiny bit. But yeah, the first few turns of the first few turns of the reel are crucial. Ah, another eel. It's not a bad sized fish, but it's not the ling that we want. It's not a bad sized fish. By all accounts, but it is not the ling that we want. And that was on the wrecking leader and the conger rid that I've just put down. So yeah, up and down in no time at all because I managed to put the wrecking the the pre the pre-made wrecking leader on. Just baited up a hook length, shot it straight down. Don't know what those other two baits are doing. I'm gonna give this wreck say, another hour. See what happens. Because if all there is is little tiny strap heels down there, we're not we're not gonna find any link. And I want link. This is another way that you can tell that there's, there's like lost fishing gear stuck on the wreck. But this rod here, this rod here has the bait suspended maybe five foot above the wreck. And you can see it's stuck. All of a sudden when the rod tip just went like gradually getting heavier. And then when you put a glove on and you pull it, 
can feel the lead bouncing around and then it just gets heavier and heavier and heavier until it's bolt so it's it's like a little bit of weight a lot of weight a lot of, won't move so it's a piece of rope that's pulling up that's moving around in the tide unfortunately those snags just keep on growing because as you lose your gear into it you make the snag bigger and unless you have got strong enough gear to be able to pull that piece of net off the wreck or it tears you're never going to get your gear back so that's probably lost yeah. just sorry as we started moving like that and the tide swung around the rod just went it's obviously as the tide was running one way the piece of rope was in the tide and as soon as the tides changed brought the rope over the top of the wreck rope or net yeah. I think what we'll do is we'll finish this up I'll fish for as long as I can it's probably going to be like another 30 minutes before the tide's fully running the other direction and go and anchor up on some rough ground get out Whoa. Didn't think I was going to get that one out of the wreck. Every fish today has been right in amongst it. You'll be right on top of them. And I honestly didn't think I was going to get that fish out. Please be a ling. It's a conga, but it's a big one. Don't start. Ah, it's a decent sized fish, but it's not the ling that I wanted. size of its head this is a really good solid fish I don't know if you can see the hook hold there as well just in the bottom jaw yeah he was hanging he was hanging on hard He was really hanging on to the wreck. Try and get a quick photo of him. Let's go. Right, I've got my life in order. I've got everything tidied up. I've got all the rods stored away. I'm going to go hold the anchor up. And I'm going to have a run in shore and I'm going to see what the tide's like in shore on a piece of rock. I might put the anchor down on a rock mark and see if I can't find an inshore link. Just to try and salvage the team. <laughs> Yeah, I really do seem to have picked the wrong wreck today. Just strappy eels. That last one was a good one, but it still made, it just made a mess. Uh, well, it's better than blanking, isn't it? You'll see now why I put that piece of wood on the rope. The piece of wood keeps the anchor boy away from the front of the boat. So I can steam up and round like this. Link the anchor up round a cleat and then steam off and haul my anchor. Now that the anchor has reached the boy at the end, just pull it on him. Whew. Let's go. New spot ground so I'm using a grapple anchor set back at anchor now and I've just dropped some baited feathers down to try and see what life's down there and have hooked straight into a pouting 
Now this, this is a really good size. On the big size of a light, on the big side of a light bait. Still send this back down though, so I'm gonna put it in a light bait tank. I'm gonna tie up a light bait rig and I'm gonna send that one down. Yeah. Same as before, you just need to build a scent trail. Yep. Again, a nice eel, but not what I'm looking for. Yeah, another, another 20 pound fish, but it's not what I'm after. Yeah, that was strange the way that one fought. Heavy light, heavy light, just not the ling that we're after. Try again. Now that is not okay. Tell you what, this one's a stubborn one. There was no bite at all. The rod was just... <laughs> rod was hooped over like that and just straightened up. And I thought, I know that is. The bites and the fish have been really weird today. Like that one there, that one didn't give a bite at all. There was no bite, like I say, the rod. The rod was just sitting over in the tide like that and all of a sudden it just went and straightened up and then went down again. And I thought, oh, that'll be a fish that. And yeah, and it, usually when you bring them up to the side of the boat and you lift the reds out of the water, they'll open their mouth for a bit so you can unhook them. They've just all been really awkward today as well. I don't know what's going on. Still not a ling. Oh. That's a proper head shaking fish. That was a really aggressive tear. Yes! That... That is what we were after! That is what we wanted! <laughs> that is what we wanted. <laughs> that there is a fantastic eating link. That is exactly what... <laughs> that's what I've been going to all this effort for, is this fish. I gave him dispatch real quick. This is coming home with me. Yes. <laughs> Perseverance. That's what it took. <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes. Ah. Oh.
It's always great to catch a good fish, but I tell you what, I've worked for that one today. <laughs> Time is it now? I have been out here for. I've been out fishing for eight hours. I've re anchored five times. Uh, God knows I'm, I must, I think I've lost uh, half a dozen fish, fish through probably 10 eels, four dogfish for that one ling. I set out today to catch a ling and I was like, I'm going to catch one. <laughs> but I was honestly, I was like, yeah, 15 more minutes and I'm going to call it. This is it. Whew, brilliant. That actually, that, that is a really good, <laughs> that's a really good specimen ling. Um, this is a which is a cracking fish this one it really did it took that hook right right down there there was no chance of unhooking that fish he wasn't coming off he is an absolute stunner see all them teeth in there that there is good oh, it's a good 20 pound fish for an inshore reef that is fantastic and <laughs> I think pretty much in one fish I've just restocked my freezer <laughs> so yeah uh, I'm going to tidy up because he, he splashed about all over the spot I've got um, two more rods I'll fish them baits out and that's it and I'll go home because I can go home now <laughs> right I've got all the rods in now I've tidied up there's, there's a lot of cleaning to do this boat was clean this morning Aye, right, all the fishing that I've done today has been with the fish locker wrecking rigs, the fish locker conger rigs, and the wrecking leaders. Now that ling was actually caught on a fish locker conger rig. Yeah, they're great rigs. I'd um, get away wasp. I don't mind bees, but I don't like wasps. Yeah, there's. Uh, <laughs> I'm real. I'm over the moon with that ling. Yeah, that's that's saved it for me. Fish through a lot to get that ling. Just got to pull the anchor, fill it that fish, then we'll get home. No more to say other than I hope you enjoyed joining me. All the very best. See you later. Just like that. <laughs>